All right, Dolan, now we're going to talk about the 10 true freshmen to know in college football. We're going to spoil two of them right there, as you can see behind us. We're going to get to them at the very end of this video. But we have a very special one to start off here at number 10. Of course, I'm in. Football's played in three phases, right? And I remember you ripping me for putting Graham Nicholson, <laughs> the, the new kicker for Alabama, number 10 of my top 10 transfer portal <laughs> players. But, you know, we got to go to Iowa. we got to talk about a punter. They just lost Torrey Taylor to the Chicago Bears in the fourth round of the draft. He set the FBS record for punting yards mm -hmm. in a season. But somebody's got to take that role over, and it's still bound to be a heavy role. And that's Reese Dakin, who comes over from Australia. Long lineage of Australian punters. You think about Brad Wing and Michael Dixon and guys like that, and he's the next one. He's certain to get plenty of work there for the Hawkeyes, just like Torrey Taylor did the last several years. Yeah, a little tongue-in-cheek for that one. Obviously, the number 2,546 player in the country coming out of high school but he was a number four punter as well so we had to throw him in there as Iowa's new starting punter who I mean like you said Iowa uses punters more than anyone else in the country makes sense that he's going to be a, a true freshman that you got to know uh, in college football number nine for us is a guy that isn't the number 2546 player in the country Don he's a number two player in the country and that is Ellis Robinson the fourth the cornerback from Georgia five-star recruit number one corner in the country actually the highest rated cornerback recruit since Bengals legend Vernon Hargreaves 11 years ago. Uh, excellent length, man. Has about 33-inch arms despite only being 6 feet tall. Really good ball skills as well. Really good footwork. Um, he's only 180 pounds right now, so he's got to continue adding mass. He's not really an elite athlete either, but you look at that Georgia cornerback room right now, man. They lost Kamari Lasseter. They have kind of some wide-open spots outside of Dalen Everett as well. Julian Humphrey is probably going to be the starter, but I think that we're going to see Ellis Robinson a lot as a true freshman. And if Julian Humphrey isn't, you know, up to snuff, Ellis Robinson could be a starter at some point in the season. So I think he'll start off uh, as, as a number two player on the depth chart, but I think there's a, a lot of playing time to be had for Ellis Robinson this year. Yeah, absolutely. And staying in the SEC at the same position, we'll take it over to Alabama. And we're kind of cheating here at number eight. Instead of one guy, we're actually going to go with three. But Alabama's got real questions at cornerback, especially yep. with their depth. They're going to start a couple of transfers into Monty Jackson and Deshaun Jones. But behind that, we really don't know what they have. So we've got several true freshmen we're looking at. Jalen Mbakwe, who's an absolute blazing speedster. He's got a big track background. Xavier Mincy, who's 6'1", also with a track background. Background, I believe it was a state qualifier in the high jump as well. And Zabian Brown, who fits Alabama's mold as a physical man mm -hmm. coverage guy. They they love the youth. They love to have depth in the secondary, at least with Nick Saban. They did. It'd probably stay the same with Kalen DeBoer. And it's very hard to rely on just two cornerbacks all season. So we could see several true freshmen, including these three guys, playing for Alabama very early. Yeah, all of them five star recruits. And I, I mean, I've looked at a lot of Alabama beat reporters and what they're saying with the cornerback room. They're like, yeah, these true freshmen are going to play, man, and maybe even become starters down the line this season for them and another guy that I've heard about for them is uh, uh, Red Morgan he's a four-star recruit at safety um, gonna be pushing for playing time at slot corner so that secondary could be featuring four true freshmen in, in Alabama secondary this upcoming season another Alabama play here at number seven though Dawn that is Ryan Williams the wide receiver from Alabama five-star recruit number three receiver number five overall player doesn't project to be one of the starting three receivers right now, but he should figure in heavily uh, to that room and be a starter down the line for them. Legit, legit speed, man. He ran a 10-4-9 in the 100-meter dash as just a sophomore in high school. Uh, just for reference, I believe the winning time in the Olympics this year was, what, a 9-7-8, I believe Noah Lyles ran. So that's not that far off, man, which is that crazy. It's only obviously like seven-tenths of a second uh, off of that. Uh, you really use that speed to win deep after the catch. Got to continue adding weight, though. He's uh, only 175 pounds. Um, and I just think he's the next speedster they have there. I and mean, they've had Jameson Williams. They've had Henry Ruggs. They've had Jalen Waddle there. I think he's the perfect replacement for Isaiah Bond. He is going to pair beautifully with Jalen Moreau with how much he loves to throw deep. Kalen DeBoer also loves to throw deep as well. So, yeah, I mean, look, you have Kendrick Law and Kobe Prentice and, and Jeremy Bernard there. But, a lot of inexperience in that room and you know they had over under 900 yards last year combined so I think Ryan Williams he's not projected to start right now immediately but I think he's going to be playing a lot as a true freshman especially as their uh, new deep threat probably yeah, yeah he could certainly be an x factor in their season because for me as far as picking them to go to the playoff the biggest question for me is what Alabama has at wide receiver we know Milrose great we know DeBoer is a great play caller but they have to find weapons they lost Amari Nyblack the mm -hmm. starting tight end too they're really having to put this weaponry back together but let's get away from the skill guys for a little bit we got to run an offensive lineman to talk about it and at number six look Notre Dame's had some injuries 
up front, especially at left tackle. They lost both their starting tackles in Joe Alton, Blake Fisher in the draft. So Anthony Knapp is a guy who's expected to start at left tackle that we're looking at. Look, he's a big, nasty run blocker. Man, I think that's going to be a theme with these offensive linemen that we're going to talk about. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, watching him, he just looks like one of those Notre Dame tackles. He's physical. He plays to the whistle. He wants to pancake everybody. And, and I think, you know, as a young as a young kid, right, you're not always going to have every aspect going, right? The pass protection at the college level, blocking big-time pass rushers, NFL-type pass rushers. But I, to me, at least at the very least, he fits the nastiness that Notre Dame's always looking for, and they have a long tradition of nasty run-blocking offense alignment. I think Anthony Knapp's going to fit right in. Might take him a few games to just get the experience and get his feet under him, but he's going to be a big piece of their team this year. Yeah, I mean, you, with Charles Jagasaw suffering a season-ending torn pec, man, I mean, that he's probably going to play immediately as a true freshman left tackle when he's the new replacement for Joe Alt. Big shoes to fill, obviously, both physically and uh, figuratively, but uh, I think he's a new uh, blindside protector for Riley Leonard. I, I'm with you, man. It seems like a... He was recruited as an interior offensive lineman. Seems like a guy who's going to play in the interior long term due to his size. But at least this year, he's going to probably be the starting left tackle for Notre Dame uh, as a true freshman. Another guy who might start at left tackle as a true freshman is Josiah Thompson uh, at South Carolina. Four-star recruit, number three offensive tackle, and number 36 overall player. So right on the edge of being a five-star recruit. But all indications out of camp right now are that is that the Gamecocks are going to be starting this kid at left tackle. Um, and he has excellent size, really good length as well, Six foot seven, uh, only 300 pounds right now, so still some room to fill out his frame. Moves very well for the position, very flexible, plays with a good pad level, even though he's really tall. Um, still going to take some time to develop as a pass blocker, and he's got to add strength, but he's got a lot of upside, man. And look, you look at what they had last year, the fourth lowest graded offensive line in the Power Five. If a new quarterback in Lenore Sellers, too, you want to protect, um, I think Josiah Thompson immediately is going to be an impact player for the Gamecocks. Absolutely, and that's another team that's going to build their offense around the run game and around Sellers, who was just announced, I believe, this week, this past yep. week, as the starter. So they're going to base it off the run game, and Sellers and Rocket Sanders and Thompson's going to be a big part of that. Then one more offensive tackle for us, and a huge conversation, Max, as we all know over the entire offseason been Colorado, Colorado's offensive line, right? Yep. And Shadur Sanders was the most sacked quarterback in the Power Five last year. They were, I believe, last in the entire nation in rushing yards per game. They just had to fix things up front. So they go and recruit the number one offensive tackle in the country, guy, a guy who would probably normally go to an Alabama or an mm -hmm. Ohio State or a Georgia, ends up at Colorado. That's Jordan Seaton. Look, he's going to be inserted as their left tackle, no question. He's 6'5". He's 285, if not more than that, probably maybe closer to 300. He was 330 at one point in high school, 34-inch arms, and he's another one. I just love watching him. He plays to the whistle. I mean, it maybe even past the whistle. He might have to be careful with these college referees because he is just looking to put people on their back in pass protection, in the run game, all over. I mean, if he can make the quick adjustment, this is going to be a huge addition, along with several transfers that they got on the rest of the line. But Jordan Seaton is one of the crucial players for Colorado's success in the Big 12 this yeah. season. It starts with protect, protecting Shadur Sanders. They've gotten some new running backs in there that they're trying to fix the running game. And obviously the offensive alignment, guys like Justin Mayers and guys like that on the inside. Seaton's a huge part, though, and they didn't get him, they didn't get him to sit on the bench this season. No. He's going to be Colorado's starting left tackle, and he's going to make a big impact. Yeah, I mean, listen, Shador Sanders is the most sack quarterback in the Power Five last year, so you need him to make a huge impact. And when I was watching him too, Dalton, like, he's very technically sound, man, which is good. Like, I've seen a lot of scouting reports talk about him. They're like, yeah, he's the most polished offensive lineman coming out of high school, which is good considering he's going to be playing immediately. And also, I know it's not a Big 12 competition, obviously, but he played tough competition in high school. He played at St. John's College in D.C., which is a powerhouse. Played at IMG Academy as well, which is obviously like the standard for high school football. And they play a really hard schedule. So um, I'm really excited to see what he could do and see if he could help turn this offensive line around for uh, Colorado. The top three, though, Dolan, are all top four recruits coming out, and all three of them are going to be absolute stars immediately, I think. And starting at number three is Cam Coleman the wide receiver from Auburn, five-star recruit, number two receiver, number four overall player coming out of high school. He not only will be the starter at Auburn immediately, he might even be the number one receiver immediately for Peyton Thorne in that Auburn offense. In fact, he was the offensive MVP of the spring game as he had four catches for 92 yards and a touchdown. Uh, big catch radius, man. He's six foot three. Uh, really good athleticism at that size as well. Made some unbelievable catches in that spring game and even in high school as well, man, has the speed to separate downfield. And with a kind of inaccurate quarterback in Peyton Thorne, that catch radius is going to be huge for him, man. So 
Auburn uh, had the worst receiving grade in the F- in the SEC last year and one of the worst in the country. I think Cam Coleman, man, his catch rate is truly is ridiculous. And I think he, he made a diving catch in the spring game that was crazy. I think Cam Coleman is going to instantly not only be one of the Auburn's top receivers, but maybe the top receiver for the Tigers this year. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and they need it badly. The team that was – they had the worst receiving grade in the SEC and 119th in the country. They need – you know, a lot of people will blame Peyton Thorne and say, oh, he can only run the ball or whatever, but he needs help on the outside, and Coleman's going to give it to him. And a team that always has help on the outside, yeah. and the one guy at the position rated ahead of Coleman in this year's recruiting rankings, Jeremiah Smith from Ohio State. We've seen mm-hmm. the practice clips. This guy's an alien. He's 6'3". He's 215. His ball skills are just incredible from what I've seen. I I mean, the hands and the body control. I watch him and I see a bit of A.J. Green. I I mean, and you just look at this long line of Ohio State wide receivers, right? We got Marvin Harrison recently, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba and Chris Olave. And and I mean, they just always have one, right? And he's just the next one. I, I mean... It's just it's it feels unfair, doesn't it? Where it's like, oh, they just oh they lose Harrison, they're gonna the <laughs> passing game's gonna dip a bit. Oh now now they get Jeremiah Smith, the number one player actually in the country at any position, mm-hmm. just freakish. Uh, it's it's the only way to describe it. If he becomes that vertical threat that they need, because I, I to me I feel like Emeka Buka is a little more of that intermediate kind of chain mover. Mm-hmm. If Smith becomes a vertical threat and he's winning 50-50 balls and he's scoring touchdowns down the field then Ohio State, we really, really start talking about them as maybe national title favorites. But Smith's a freak of nature, and he's just another one in a long line of Ohio State freaks. It's unfair, man. They lose a generational receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr., and by all indications, might get another generational receiver in Jeremiah Smith. And actually, Don, he is the highest-rated wide receiver to ever come out of high school since they started recruiting rankings, I think, in 2000, I think. So 21st century at least, uh, he's the highest-rated receiver ever. And going to Ohio State now, which is just like, oh boy. Here it's we just go. unfair, it feels it's, like. Dude, just, as a Penn, they just always find them. As a they Penn State fan, I can tell you it is extremely unfair. I've been waiting for any of these guys, and we're getting the cast off from Ohio State and Julian Fleming right now, who well, I'm excited for, but still, uh, I'd kill for Jeremiah Smith. But at number one, the biggest impact true freshman, yes, Jeremiah Smith is the number one player in the country, and this guy isn't. But he was just named literally as of recording today as a starting quarterback for Nebraska, and all the hype is on him. Is that guy right there? Dylan Rayola, five-star quarterback, number three quarterback uh, overall, and number 21 overall recruit in the country. As I just mentioned, Matt Rule named him as the starting quarterback as of recording today. Uh, He's the first five-star to go to Lincoln in 19 years and their highest-rated quarterback recruit ever. And also, Dalton, he's royalty at Nebraska. His dad, Dominic, was a Remington Award-winning center there, played a long career in the NFL with the Detroit Lions as well. His uncle, Donovan, is the offensive line coach at Nebraska right now, too. So uh, Dylan Rayola has a long lineage at Nebraska. Um, and, man, they have a lot of pressure on this kid because they have a good defense. They have some nice pieces around him. And the biggest issue and why they didn't go bowling last year, uh, it was the passing game. And why they didn't go bowling last eight years. And now, with Dylan Rayola coming in, their win total is seven and a half. So this is a team that hasn't gone bowling in, like, I think eight years. And now you're saying, oh, they're going to win at least seven or eight games. It's like, it's a lot of pressure on a 19-year-old kid, right? So um, I, when I watch them, though, man, and you could t- go into a little bit, too, because I know you watch the spring game, just the arm talent jumps off the tape, man. It's crazy. He could throw from any arm angle. And he actually he's a physically developed player, too. He's 6'3", 230 already as a true freshman. And I don't know if you saw the picture, Dawn, of him, uh, I think, walking in class, but he had the same haircut, same fashion, same sunglasses as Patrick Mahomes. He actually um, worked out with Mahomes a few times. He, he says he models his game after Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes loves the kid as well. And you can kind of tell in the play style, man. It's like, oh, yeah, he's trying to make some unbelievable throws out there. There's one where on his high school tape where he was getting sacked. He got spun around a few times. And as he was falling, he just threw it up and completed it for, somehow. So I'm excited for Royola, man. I think, yes, he's not the number one recruit in the country, but he's a five-star recruit, and Nebraska, everything hinges on Dylan Rayola this year. So that's why he's the biggest true freshman to know in college football this year. A- absolutely. And, and look, he's got – you can see it, the off-platform talent, the arm talent, right? He throws with touch. Mm-hmm. He can throw with velocity. But to me, watching the spring game too, and you can tell he's had that NFL upbringing – I, I thought he looked incredibly comfortable, right? Yeah. I mean, it can be a spring game, first kind of sort of college action against a college defense, right? Enrolled early so he could play in the spring game. Big but stadium, too. That stadium was full. Huge stadium. They yeah. were completely full at yeah. that stadium. And he just – he looked like he belonged there. And I think sometimes people forget how young these kids are. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes it can take – they can be nervous. Like, you can – even five-star guys can be nervous their first time in a big college stadium like that. He just looked like he belonged. He played like he belonged. And to me, he throws the ball with excellent touch. I'm telling yeah. you. 
if they can find guys who can get open downfield, he can layer the ball really, really well. I, I liked everything I saw from him. And I know, you know, usually me, I don't jump on guys too, too early, but it's like Rayola, if he shows that sort of poise in regular season games, Nebraska's going to have a really good season. Yeah, this is Dalton's least favorite video because we're talking about basically all five-star recruits right now. And basically all we're talking about is their high school tape and what they're ready to come out of high school. But those are the 10 true freshmen to know in college football heading into 2024 season. Obviously, there's are plenty more that we need left out. I think Dylan Stewart from uh, from South Carolina, the edge defender, LJ McCray, the edge defender from Florida, a bunch of guys. So let us know in the comments below any other true freshmen that we left out or what you think about these true freshmen that we're talking about today and who's going to make the most immediate impact and who's going to be an instant star in college football. That's what we got for the 10 true freshmen to know in the country.